Coming across a small brook, Meave ordered her soldiers to replenish their water supplies. When they returned, it was with empty water skins and troubled expressions. Milady, the water tastes of blood. Uh, not like black pudding, mind, but uh, rancid, uh, filthy. Meave had no choice but to march on. She gulped dryly and wondered how to interpret this strange event. An omen, perhaps? A warning from the gods? She soon learned the truth. Following the brook upstream, the Lyrians arrived at a small pool. Bobbing on its surface were dozens of corpses. A young woman caught Meave's gaze. Her long hair spread delicately atop the water, wide open eyes reflecting the sky, a fine nose peppered with freckles, and a gaping wound slashed across her throat. We shall stop here, the Queen said calmly, and give these souls a proper burial. Reynard, send scouts. Tell them they are not to return until they ascertain what has happened here. When the scouts returned a while later, they brought with them a barefooted peasant they'd found hiding in the woods. They claimed he hailed from Horton, a nearby village, the village whose inhabitants had been murdered. Then black-clad wretches stormed the village, my lady. The devil free gave at the fall. Rounded us right up, took us down to the lake. All village, mind. Then chop, chop, and splosh, splosh. It was I alone gave him the slip. Meave listened to the man's tale then placed him in the care of her medics and ordered the Lyrians to break camp. She rode at the head of their column, reined at her side, her knuckles gripped white on the reins. Do we know where this Frigef is stationed? Our riders report he's pitched camp to the east. Then let's pay him a call. They killed all, like Rosberg. My lady, please, make them pay. The Lyrians had no trouble finding Frigef's camp. It was the size of a sprawling town. Meave stopped her caravan and called for a council. The first to speak was Reynard. Seems our scouts were both right and wrong, Your Grace. They did pinpoint General Frigef, the butcher of Horton. Unfortunately, they underestimated his detachment. It is much larger and better armed than our own. Meave hesitated long. Few deserve punishment more than this Vrigaf. But she concluded attacking his superior forces bore too much risk. The Lyrians found themselves once more outside General Vrigaf's camp. Reynard shielded his eyes from the sun and counted the tents. There are two Nilf guardians apiece for our men, Your Grace. That changes nothing, Meave said, forestalling all protest. If I leave him unpunished, without so much as an attempt, I shall never be able to face my reflection again. We must attack. Reynard bowed and passed the order to the Lyrians. Later that same day, Meave and Vrigaf's forces stood face to face on the field of battle. Come out, Frigef! It's time you pay for your crimes! You will pay! There! Frigef! I see him! We've got to catch him! Got him! The rest should surrender before long! The Lyrians won the day, despite their foe's distinct advantage. Historians later ascribed Meave's victory to her light troops' superior maneuverability in the difficult terrain compared to the plate-clad Nilf Guardians. But if you ask me, that wasn't it at all. A storm of fury had been quietly gathering in the Lyrians' hearts. A squall of rage stoked by the Nilfgaardians' unparalleled cruelty towards the conquered. And no one embodied this barbarism more perfectly than General Frigaf. Meave's men were ready to sacrifice anything to see him punished. They dragged the defeated general before Meave. The Queen wished to learn why he'd ordered the execution of an entire village how the Nilfgaardians could possibly justify such a crime. Two weeks prior, I'd sent a detachment to Horton to procure feed. Captain Gaynor commanded it. While he was verifying their grain stores, they barricaded him in the barn and put it to flame. The Queen listened to the General's story, her face a mask, betraying nothing. Murdered? 
One man was murdered. Frigif raised his eyes to Meves. The Queen was surprised to see them wet with tears. Yes, my lady. My son. The General's simple words bore pain, grief, and a thirst for revenge that would never be slaked. The Queen had to decide what to do with Frigif. No doubt the General had earned punishment, the harshest possible at that. Yet, such a weighty personage could fetch a hefty ransom, and Meave's army desperately needed the gold. In the end, the Queen decided to return the General for a golden ransom. Whether she chose the path out of mercy, moved by the Nilfgaardian's tears, or out of pure material calculation, sensing an excellent chance to replenish her war chest, it is hard to say. One thing is certain. Her men were crestfallen at the news. They had challenged Frigif's greatly superior forces in the name of justice, not gold. My father taught me to respect the generals of my enemies, that even in captivity, their arms should not be taken from them. Their guards should greet them in salute, the Queen said. But you, Frigef, you are no general. Merely a cutthroat dressed as one. You shall die like the good folk of Horton. Quickly. Summarily. Frigef received the Queen's decision with sang -froid. He neither struggled nor begged for mercy. He simply laid his head on the trunk. A short moment later, it rolled onto the ground to the Lyrian's deafening applause. Milka, Bezrad, Kristan, all killed, souls snuffed out to the very last. Could have run for help, I know. But I was afeard, afeard the black clouds had catch wind of me, hear me. What now? Whatever will I do? Alone? Left all alone? My lady, buried our valuables for the black clouds came in the wood near a big boulder. Got a bit of charcoal? I can sketch the way for you. 